Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So now with the implemented changes on the current VB, there's going to be four types of Dragon Bus, which basically include the Inferno Drake, which gives you attack damage and ability power, like 8, 16, 24%. The Mountain Drake, that gives you damage to epic monsters and towers, as true damage. The Cloud Drake, that gives you out of, movement, out of combat movement speed. And the Ocean Drake, that restores 10% of your missing health and mana every couple of seconds. Looking at these changes, it seems like a good idea in general to like have comp-specific things coming in. So each each comp can like kind of pick out what they need to contest and which strike they do not need to contest in order to get the most out of their comp specific uh, specific elements. The general idea is good, but the execution is really interesting. I'd say I don't want to say bad because I haven't played on the PvE yet. But uh, I think that the fire dragon as well as the ocean dragon kind of give too much to any specific comp to be fair. Giving someone 8, 16, 24 uh, percent ability on attack damage will make you will make you steamroll any team fight. And there's no counter play because these dragon buffs are permanent throughout the game, uh, as they were before. But now they're actually like, stronger, and they're even stronger for like like two minutes after you slay the initial drake so it is it is a bit too strong um the ocean drake per se basically allows you at some point to just steamroll down any lane and pick any fight you want and just hope that the uh, missing health and mana restoration kind of carries you through them and it will carry you through them so i do think that the changes are overall interesting and again kind of can pan out in in any way but i think that the execution on the, the inferno drake and the ocean drake boss are just strong the fact that the dragons are randomized, I think, is a very bad part of the game. Because to me, it looks like two of the dragons are really not that strong. One of them is something that every team comp wants, like, all the time, which is the fire dragon. You know, there's no comp that's not going to want the fire dragon. And then water is, like, situationally really OP. Like, say you're playing a poke comp and the water dragon spawns and the enemy team, like, randomly gets it. Your comp is almost done, though. Like, you, you basically, like, are so neutered. And if the Water Dragon just didn't spawn, you might have won that game. Now, the Elder Dragon is something that spawns later, and I, I think that's a good change. I think having another big neutral objective that the teams will want later in the game, not just having Baron, is something that is good because it's something that just provides more incentive to fight over, more like uh, choices to make in the game, and will just, just as a good addition. So the new Rift Herald, uh, is basically uh, an objective that you take and it's never respawning, which is obviously quite contrary to the current Rift Herald. Um, it gives you a 20 minute buff, which uh, is called Glimpse of the Void, and it pers uh, persists through death, which is again different to the current Rift Herald buff. So I think that the idea behind like having an objective in the early game that is going to be lasting until after the early game is a pretty interesting concept and i do think it's the right approach to the rift Heart because it gives the rift Heart a a longer meaning it's going to be not something you just trade off or whatever it is and just like okay the enemy's taking turret and we don't really care we just make our split pusher better for a short time so we take that and we might as well take it for instead so you maybe you can take the top turret like in the next two to three minutes too but it's really going to be a thing where uh, if you have a split pushing comp, especially like a Jack the Tunnel, you would want that buff. You'd think about taking this as fast as possible, like not allowing the enemy team to contest it, because now it actually means a lot because it persists for 20 minutes. Since you cannot solo it and everything like that, and you couldn't do, really do it before, uh, it's going to be an investment of a whole team or maybe just like have a lane swap coming in and then contest it. I think that if you have a split pusher like Jax or Trundle, especially like with, with uh, the corruption charges that are obviously not specified yet in terms of damage and everything like that, I do think it's going to be a situation where you like the enemy team runs against a clock technically because you are unable to be pushed out of lane and because of the damage reduction and if the corruption stacks are really strong you're unable to duel him so that means if you have dex trundle or any kind of split pusher for that matter if he has that buff he's 100% gonna get to the stage that uh, he's gonna dominate the game so I think it's more or less a buff that sure has immediate power but has a more long-lasting approach because if you cannot push someone out of lane that is supposed to be punished early to mid game then this is becoming an issue later in the game and i think Jax can easily sort of carry the game with uh the rift held giving him time and not ramp up to that unmovable uh, object state there's gonna be more changes to jungle and now there's gonna be a different blue buff and a red buff the blue buff now grants a total of 50% ability power towards your total ability power and there's not gonna be an a per level anymore uh, the mana region is obviously the nice thing because it's now doubled based on the max mana. 
But yeah, the buff duration is going to reduce to 90 seconds, whereas the first buff tier is still like 120 seconds duration, which is something that is really interesting. I think that is a really good design because early in the game, the jungles are really vulnerable to a certain extent, especially if they're mana heavy. So having the first tier still being as strong as it was before and not having to worry about that is really important to any kind of jungler. I think that the buff per se or like the change in effect kind of doesn't doesn't really step in until a very mid game point of the game because a 50% of the total ability power compared to two per level two IP per level is really a minimal trade off. It's going to be like one or two AP more if you run a full AP page. But if you don't do that, you will actually get less AP out of that buff than you did before. So it's actually going to be weaker in the early game in terms of damage if you care about two or three AP more or less. But it's going to be better in, in terms of mana reaction, which is obviously a good thing because some junglers felt like that even though their blue buff still went oom, uh, one of them being kindred if you spam the Q for too much. I think it's a it's a decent change and kind of gives more pride to blow off because if you deny it, you're gonna allow yourself to have a short power spike of 90 seconds. And especially in mid game or late game AP uh, mid laner, they're gonna be stronger and way stronger than they were before during the duration of blue off. So there's that. I th the red buff change is quite interesting in a way where it rewards attack speed uh, stacking because there's gonna be a more immediate strength to the uh, first stick or the first hit technically uh, which is quite contrary to the uh, change in devour towards the blood razor now which basically like seems like a way weaker item and doesn't seem like a really viable option because it seems all priced for the price that it has 2.6k for 40 percent extra tech speed and three percent max health only makes sense on champions that have a double hit but in that case it's really questionable if that actually if there's any trade-off to that so yeah the, the red buff per se uh, it's a good thing that it has a more immediate tick because then you can you kind of have like Obviously, it's harder uh, or easier to just see how much damage it does, so you don't always like that off the tick as I like to do. But it's just something where I don't think it's a big change. I think it's just there, but I don't see why you would do it if you decide to basically trash an item and devour and nerf it into Blood Razor, technically. All right, so there's going to be a change to the jungle XP, and the change to the jungle XP is basically similar to the approach that they had last or this year already, technically, where they give bonus XP on top of the machete or the hunter talisman and have the base experience of the camps go down. So buddy jungling or do jungling, how I call it, is going to be even weaker now. So sharing camps and everything like that is a really bad idea, uh, which basically leaves us at something where the top laners are unable to get any kind of XP in the jungle or just little to none XP in the lane swap situation, which basically means that lane swaps are going to be less, like really less good for any scaling top lane there is. So you'll have similar to how you had in season two, you had Elsa market junglers like they're staying low XP and can just like kind of gank whenever they want to, like level two, level three. I think the same is going to apply for top lanes in case the lane swap thing is still going to persist to say. So they have to be low XP and they have to kind of play like supportive roles and really play to just like gank and impact mid lanes and not really play to get XP or scale at all. Currently, the way turret damage works is it first scales up to 175% damage then if it keeps hitting the same target, it'll go up to 225% damage. And then if it switches targets, it goes back to 175. And it takes five shots to get all the way up there. And now they're making it take only four shots and stay at 225, even if it switches. So it's a lot more damage. And I think the main thing this is gonna affect is 2v1s, because right now, basically nobody ever defends the turret, because it takes so many resources to actually send enough people so they don't get dove. But with this, the turret's doing significantly more damage and you can defend maybe like two against four or something like that and it just will be a lot more easy to defend and it should affect who ones quite a bit all right so they're taking away a lot of the global gold from both outer and inner turrets they're taking away 25 gold to each player so 125 gold total and they're adding 80 local gold to the outer turrets and taking away 75 local gold to the inner turrets so they're basically overall they're taking away a decent chunk of gold from outer and inner turrets and they're making it so you have to kind of choose who you're giving to it on the outer turret. So right now you usually give it to the AD carry, he gets like a big chunk of gold, he can get like a, a bigger item faster and that'll be more in the game. But it seems like they just want turrets to be a little less impactful and that's what will happen. They're just going to be a little less impactful. And with the changes to the neutral, like Dragon and things like that, it's just going to um, be less of a turret taking game and more of a neutral objective taking game. They're adding 40 armor MR to turrets, but they're taking away 700 HP and making it so it's able to get penetrated by armor and MR penetration. This seems to just be making it so people who put 
value and a, like penetration, like take like penetration runes or st buying stuff like that, get value out of also killing turrets with that. Where before, you know, marksmen don't really get that and they can just kill turrets really fast. It's going to be making it so they don't kill it as fast and people who build that kind of stuff can build it faster. It's just balancing it, it out a bit more. And they're also making it so that when creeps aren't around, its damage is reduced by 66.67% rather than the 200 armor MR that it used to get. And that shouldn't really affect. No one's really killing turrets when creeps aren't around at all and it's still going to be the same way. All right, so they're making Grievous Wounds affect all healing now instead of just self-healing, which I think was a bad change because when it was just self-healing, it kind of felt weird. Like you have this thing that's supposed to remove healing, but it does sometimes and it doesn't. It's just kind of this awkward kind of ability. And now it's actually like a, a way to counter certain champions like Soraka. Like before this change, like right now, sometimes I don't even take Ignite for Soraka. I'll just take Exhaust because it, it doesn't really actually counter at all. It doesn't really matter. She's still going to be healing the person you're trying to kill at full effectiveness. So this, this will just be a lot more intuitive and a lot just better feeling. And that's it for this Pro Patch Breakdown. Thanks for watching, and for more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lowclass.com.